Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Spring is in the air. I think it's probably safe to say at this point, considering it's nearly the end of May, that spring is here. And we've been doing a bit of spring cleaning this week, working on cleaning up some of the stuff that we started but never finished, or figuring out advancements and stuff like that. Been doing a little bit of that over the last few episodes, but I was thinking, what else makes me think of spring? And the answer is right here under our noses. Flowers are a really nice feature of the springtime. Flowers start to come up everywhere, birds are singing in the trees, and the bees are out doing their thing. And flowers are also quite a useful resource in Minecraft. Not only do they provide a whole bunch of the dyes that you need to colour various things, various colours, but they're also quite pretty and can be useful as decoration. And it can be useful to the player to farm flowers in quite large numbers. Now, of course, we're gonna have to leave the wither rose out of this because the wither rose is obtained through a very specific means. And if you're uh, unsure about that at all, go ahead and check out the video in which I introduced the wither rose because yeah, you kind of have to fight the wither to get hold of it, or at least summon a wither. There are ways around that. But for now, we're going to focus on the flowers that we can farm just by bone mealing the grass in your average plains biome, or in this case, we're going to go out to a flower forest where we will find the highest concentration of different flowers all in one place. And we're going to set up an automatic redstone powered flower farm. Welcome back to the flower forest where, as you can see, there are a lot of flowers everywhere. These biomes are always very pretty and the trick to creating a successful flower farm here in a flower forest is actually to find a place where as many flowers as possible are going to generate in a small enough space. Now, as I mentioned in the episode where we introduced Wither Roses and Lily of the Valley, along with Suspicious Stew, flower forests actually have precise locations where each of the flowers will generate. They sort of generate in a kind of pattern on the surface. And if you were to bone meal the ground around here and take out all of the grass and keep bone mealing until you had flowers, the pattern would look quite interesting. It actually looks kind of neat and geometric, but I think one of the things we will do to kind of illustrate this a little bit better is instead of cutting down a bunch of the trees, what I'm gonna do is build a big grass platform, which is not only going to be the area of our flower farm, but it's also going to provide some kind of insight into exactly how the pattern of flower forest flower generation works. I've got a ton of bone blocks for bone meal, so hopefully we shouldn't run out. We're gonna be needing that later for the farm as well, but I brought a whole bunch of grass blocks and a few things to keep this, this whole operation neat and tidy. We're also gonna be automating this later on, so I've got my redstone box with me as well, and there are a couple of different ways we can do that, which we will explore and then decide which one we're going to use at a later point in the video. But for now, I think we're going to start our flower farm up here on this hilltop. So I'm going to make myself a pretty large area of grass blocks, and it's going to stretch out above the forest floor over here. We're probably going to need to light up underneath it to make sure too many mobs don't spawn because it's going to end up being a little bit dark. But for now, I'll take out a couple of the trees that are in the way, and we'll get on with building this big old grass platform. So, a little bit of work and a couple of cups of tea later, I've got myself a big old grass platform as promised, and aside from the pig here, it is populated by pretty much every flower it is possible to find here in the flower forest, with the exception of the two high flowers, which don't appear when you bone meal the grass, but you can, of course, bone meal them repeatedly to reproduce them. I don't have any dandelions or poppies in this area, but that's fine because they are common literally anywhere else you bone meal the ground, you will get dandelions and poppies. You'll also be able to get poppies from an iron farm, so you don't need to worry too much about those. Got plenty of red dye, and you can get a repetitive amount of yellow dye just by repeatedly bone mealing the sunflower, which we've got plenty of back near my base. So, as far as the flowers that I want from here, I have a whole bunch of them. Everything from alliums down to the new flowers, cornflower and lily of the valley, which are going to be providing us with blue and white dye. With enough of these, you would never need to use lapis or bone meal as blue or white dye again. So that's great to have. Of course, we've got azure bluets, oxeye daisies, the different colors of tulips are here as well. And then alliums up here in the corner giving us, which I believe they make magenta dye. 
we just break one of these and find out. Yeah, that is magenta. So you'll be able to get plenty of that from this farm as well. In order to get this pattern, which by the way, it is a pattern. If you look at it from the air, you can kind of see that each of these generates in a kind of curve or circular formation that's actually going to be present throughout the entire flower forest. If we were to bone meal this and take away all the grass, you would see everything creating these really interesting flowing geometric patterns, almost as though it's a fractal, one of those kind of really colorful Mandelbrot patterns or something like that. But of course, in order to get it to look like this, I have had to remove a whole bunch of grass, the kind of grass entities that grow and the tall grass that grows up around here, because whenever you bone meal the ground, that's what you get. And so from that, I've had a ton of wheat seeds, which I plan to add to a composter in the grand scheme of things. When we have these being automatically collected, it's still going to generate a whole bunch of grass. And so having a composter nearby to compost all the wheat seeds is going to mean we get to feed a little bit more bone meal back into the system. Now, as with any other kind of composter setup, it's definitely not going to be a one-to-one -one trade. We are definitely going to run out of bone meal before the composter has been able to generate enough to kind of keep the system renewable but at least it's nice to have a renewable source of bone meal around the place in case we want to top it up it means fewer trips back to the skeleton farm for more of this stuff and if we wanted to in the grand scheme of things we could also compost all of the flowers if we decided that we'd reached maximum capacity of flowers and we didn't want to preserve anymore we could kick in a fail safe and that would transport all of the flowers into the composter as well once again creating a little bit more bone meal so this farm could effectively be halfway to being self-sustaining I would guess but uh, yeah probably not something you want to rely on you want to start with a decent quantity of bone meal before you start thinking about composting things now there are two things about this farm that we can automate we can automate the bone mealing of the grass blocks here to create the flowers and grass in the first place and we can automate the collection of these things and I want to talk about bone mealing the grass first because this actually takes advantage of an interesting mechanic that is as far as I'm aware unique to grass blocks themselves I'm going to create a secondary area of grass over here to give you an example let's just make a nice five by five area of grass over here attached to this tree and it's actually possible if we get a dispenser out of here to dispense bone meal onto grass blocks from underneath in fact even as a player you can right click on the underside of a grass block it will use some bone meal and as you can see grass has generated at the top here Grass blocks are pretty much unique in the fact that this is the only thing you can bone meal from below and it will still generate in the same way that it does with any other kind of bone meal direction. I think you can also, yeah, bone meal it from the side of a block too. So yeah, grass can be bone mealed from pretty much any direction you like. The way we're going to set this farm up is for the block to be bone mealed from below automatically using a dispenser, which now that I think about it, I'm probably gonna have to create a little tower underneath here, pop a dispenser on the top of that facing upward like that. And demonstrating this with a simple lever activation, all I need to do is pull the lever and bam, stuff grows above once we put some bone meal in the dispenser, of course. So it's very, very easy to set this up on a redstone timer that would effectively bone meal large areas of the grass here all at once. And then all we would need to do is figure out some way of collecting all of these flowers by breaking them and having them funneled into some kind of hopper system. Now you could do this with a shifting floor design and I've only brought sticky pistons with me so this isn't going to be the greatest example but for example say you had two sets of regular pistons on either side that could push this grass block platform here back and forth effectively any time you moved any of these grass blocks it would break whatever was on top of them so if i <laughs> i've got some observers set up here if i break these grass blocks you can see that basically it shifts everything in the floor to one side because this is a single one tick pulse they're actually detaching from the sticky pistons like so and that would allow all of the grass and flowers on top of here to break and while the drops the wheat seeds and the flowers themselves would hang out here on the surface you could run a hopper minecart underneath them in much the same way we've done other collection mechanisms in the past and that could very easily collect basically anything that dropped onto here you might get the occasional patch here and there because you'd be bone mealing it from below with dispensers but you could get a pretty steady rhythm going with these and a redstone clock and the bone meal being dispensed from below and you could end up with a very fast shifting floor effect for the farm now the problem with this farm design of course while it is pretty quick it is also quite resource intensive and if you wanted a long platform like the one we've got here to take in 
as many types of flour as possible, you're going to have to multiply the amount of pistons that you would require to, uh, to set up something like this. And there is a much simpler way to do it, albeit one that is ever so slightly slower, and that is to use a slime block flying machine. And that's what we're going to do with this setup over here. We're basically going to have it mow the grass for us and trim all of these flowers out, pushing them into a collection area at the each end of the platform. And as long as we've got enough slime blocks, the flying machine design is going to be much more economical in terms of the resources we're using. We're only going to need a couple of sticky pistons, some observers, some slime blocks, and some stuff to line the platform here with to make sure that none of the flowers end up popping off the sides of the platform. Then at the end, we just need a couple of water streams that feed down into a hopper, and that can be the start of our collection mechanism for all of the flowers and seeds. In fact, I've built this platform 17 blocks wide, so we can have an eight block long water stream on one side, an eight block long water stream on the other side, and it can all just filter down to a central hopper in the middle here. So this is going to be a very economical flower farm as far as the resources we're using, but it's also going to produce a pretty large amount of flowers each time the slime block flying machine sweeps one way or the other. And just so we've got a little bit more room to work and set up the flying machines, I'm going to take down these trees and get some sleep, and we'll set the platform up with a flying machine, which we built before, so I think you guys know the drill by now, but I should be able to take you guys through it step by step. Okay, I've run into a bit of a setback, but it's not a big problem, it's just something that went wrong with my calculations. Because initially I thought, yeah, 8 blocks wide is going to be perfectly fine for a slime block flying machine. But actually, because a piston can only push a maximum of 12 blocks, it's actually only possible to make this design with a 6 block wide like arm for the flying machine. Because the piston itself is actually going to have to push all six of these slime blocks here and all six of the blocks below here. Like, it, it's not just the amount of things that are attached to the piston, it's what's attached to those things. So, yeah, I need to recalculate some of this a little bit. In fact, I want to make sure that it will also be able to push the observer that's going to be powering this whole thing. Yeah, looks like that might be a problem too. Looks like we might have to take a couple of blocks off the end here and the reverse flying machine is going to go in this direction and that's only going to be able to be five blocks long as well. There we go. So I guess that's not going to be a problem, but ultimately, yeah, we kind of <laughs> we kind of need to have a uh, maybe double up on the flying machines actually. Maybe we'll do two four block wide ones and that will kind of compensate for the fact that I've made this platform too wide. But as you can see though, in just that single sweep, it's managed to pick up quite a few flowers, <laughs> more than I have room for in this box even. So I'd say that we're onto a winner. And so here is the compromise I eventually settled on. We've got two eight block wide sections of the platform here with two individual eight block wide flying machines. And there has to be this strip down the middle because if the two slime blocks on either side of here connect, they try and push each other and the flying machines break apart. So unfortunately we do have to limit the amount of area we've got here, but hopefully we should still be able to capture all of the flowers within this space. Now it's probably going to be better to switch out the spruce wood I've been using to push these for some kind of transparent block that can be pushed by slime blocks. So glass would probably be better. The main reason for that is that as you can see, there are patches of dirt around here where in the fraction of a second that the spruce wood is over the top of this, it's actually causing the grass to revert back to dirt because it's blocking the sunlight from it. And even though that's a very short amount of time, that does limit the amount of space we will be able to bone meal because grass won't just grow on regular dirt and neither will flowers as far as bone meal is concerned. So what we're probably going to have to do is go and get some glass, which I don't have on me right now, and replace the spruce wood underneath here with that glass to make sure that that doesn't happen as frequently and to make sure we can get the maximum output of flowers from the farm. But the slime block flying machines are fairly simple to set up. All we need is a row of slime blocks with some kind of pushable block underneath them and a piston facing into those and then a piston in the opposite direction with the slime block arm one block back. Then these two observers are facing downwards into the slime blocks directly in front of each piston head. And when we flick this trap door, what happens is it activates the flying machine like so and the flying machine takes off towards the one at the other end. These trap doors are set up kind of to reverse the circuit and make the flying machine travel back in the opposite direction. And as you will see from this one over here, 
It just flicks the trapdoor twice. Uh, the first flick of the trapdoor is enough to send the flying machine back to where it's going. These are set up with a simple repeater set to two ticks with an observer and an obsidian block behind there because it's not pushable. You could also do the same thing with any other unpushable block like a furnace for example and just have a redstone dust on top of there feeding the, the signal from the observer through that block into the redstone dust into the repeater and that's what activates the trap door setting that to two ticks is ideal right now because if it's anything less than that it will actually activate the observer a couple of times and the flying machine will just stay here in stasis so that activates the trapdoor for a long enough amount of time that the flying machine can get away before the trapdoor moves again. And last of all, we've got a master on off switch at this end of the farm, which is just a lever that feeds a redstone signal into these repeaters, locking the trapdoors in position so that when the observers come to rest here, the trapdoor doesn't update the observers and they don't end up flying off again. So all you really need to do is run a redstone signal into those and it's all set up. The leaf blocks around the outside are isolating the slime blocks from anything else. The blocks down there, of course, don't get pushed by the slime, neither does the grass because the slime is isolated from the, gr the grass platforms. But all that's doing is making sure that nothing escapes from the outside. If any of the flowers get pushed along by these blocks here, then they're not going to end up hopping off the side of the platform with the sort of random movement that item entities sometimes have. And with the sun going down, the last thing I need to do is set up the glass underneath these flying machines, substituting that for the spruce planks. And I also need to go and set up the dispensers underneath each of these grass platforms that's going to be bone mealing them and causing the flowers to grow. And as is pretty standard when I do these farms, a wandering trader has shown up. Hello, my friend. Oh, you've got Nautilus shells. Amazing. If only I had some emeralds on me because Nautilus shells are one of the few trades that's actually worth it from the wandering trader as far as I'm concerned. He's still only selling packed ice and not blue ice. He's even selling me a bit of green dye, which is kind of ironic considering we're setting up a dye farm. But if he's going to stick around here, if I unload the chunks, I was just grabbing some sand from the local area, but... I might actually go back and get some emeralds because those Nautilus shells will be quite useful. Okay, five. Five is the maximum that we got there. <laughs> That's such a shame. I was really hoping that we could get all eight, but hey, not to worry. At least we got some extra Nautilus shells. That might well be the only worthwhile trade the Wandering Trader has as far as I'm concerned because Nautilus shells are a bit of a pain to get without AFK fishing, which I don't really do very often. So worth it, I guess. Now, I'm not sure what the optimal configuration is going to be for these dispensers. I've just put 16 bone meal in each of them so we can give them a quick test. All we need to do is link these up with redstone wire like so. We'll probably do the same over here as well just being able to connect to the bottom of these blocks here should be enough because that will trigger the dispensers let's get a wooden button and just quickly bam like that that should have activated all of the dispensers at once meaning we should be able to bone meal quite a decent sized area okay looks like we've got a little bit of a gap in the middle there so that might need to bring them maybe a block or two closer together but I think having two on each side is going to make the most sense because that way you're getting to each of the edges of this bone mealable area as we go. Not bad, not bad. Not bad for a first try at least. Let's send this flying machine off to clear out this area just so it's nice and straightforward for the next bone meal test. What we're going to do is have the observers on each side actually trigger those dispensers. So every time this trap door gets a redstone pulse, so do the dispensers, meaning that there is always a fresh crop of flowers and grass for the flying machine to collect each time it gets triggered by this trap door. Meaning that any time this flying machine is ready to go off on its journey, again, we'll have a fresh crop of grass and flowers for it to mow down. Let's very quickly run down here, press this button again, see how the bone meal has distributed the grass and flowers this time. It actually looks like we haven't got even that much in this area. Did that one actually fire at all? Maybe it didn't. Okay, maybe there was just something already growing on top of that. That shouldn't be a problem for the farm. Yep, there we go. Okay, so it just misfired a little bit in a, in a weird sort of way. But that should be absolutely fine. And I think all we really need to do now is hook up the rest of the dispensers. This has taken some time. <laughs> Mostly in how to activate the redstone from both ends whilst also carrying a signal length that's this long. So the redstone under here is kind of spaghetti and I'm sure there is a much more elegant way of doing it that is just escaping me at this point in time. But what we have here is two separate redstone signals running from the observers at either end. And I've decided that since these machines are going to be flying basically 
in sync just to take the signal off of one repeater here uh, one observer rather over here and come down to this complete mess so what happens is the signal travels through here comes along to each of these repeaters on the inside track it's being powered on this side and what that does is take the signal out to each of the blocks underneath these dispensers activates them triggers them ends up with bone meal on the grass and uh, and, and grass and flowers grow on the outside we have the signal returning from the opposite direction and the reason we have to isolate that with repeaters facing into it this way is because if we had both signals running down the central track eventually it would hit a repeater and it wouldn't be able to have the current flow through that because repeaters are only one way not only that but if i were to activate it from the other side and have a second repeater next to this it would either completely lock up because the redstone signal would be feeding back into itself or if we put some delay on the repeater it would form a clock and that would basically constantly churn out the bone meal which might not be such a bad thing and instead of redstone spaghettifying this whole thing what you actually might want to do is put the uh, dispensers down here on a timer just for the sake of not having to have the entire thing powered by the observers coming into dock at this station but for now we should be able to activate this, watch the grass grow, and see everything be collected. Now, I will warn you ahead of time, I have tested this once, and it got very framesy. Like, I'm talking, I get like 240 FPS right now, my thing is capped at like 250. We're talking sub 30 at this point, so it's going to get a little hectic up in here. The footage might be slightly sub quality, but this happens. And the flying machines get sent off, they collect up all the flowers as they go, you can kind of see it happening behind the glass panes over there. They leave the occasional thing behind thanks to the fact that there are the odd gaps here and there, but those are going to get caught on the return trip when the flying machines come back. And yep, this is where the lag kicks in, this is where things start to get a little bit framesy when I record. And you'll notice the patches down there have actually been triggered by the bone meal with the observer like triggering the trapdoor twice that also triggers the dispensers twice so what you end up with is a whole lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of extra bone meal getting fed through here and there but this system works pretty well so far i'm pretty i'm pretty happy with it and i think if we wanted to afk at this farm for a little while and just leave it running run through the entire stock of bone meal we have here we would end up with a good stack or two of each of the flowers that grow in this patch now, as you can see, I need to work a little bit on the collection mechanism for each of these ends. I've got a hopper down this end thanks to the water streams that I set up earlier, but even that is starting to bottleneck a little bit for a start because it's got nowhere to go, but also because of the sheer variety of stuff that's coming through. Remember, item hoppers can only hold up to five different stacks of items at a time, and as you can see, we are getting more than that coming through here. I've just picked up five varieties of flowers and an additional stack of seeds which means we'll probably need to broaden the scope of this a little bit and have three hoppers instead of one feeding into the system. But I think we can make that work. Either that or we drain it with a hopper minecart and have that all disappear a little bit faster, drain that into a chest, use that as a storage buffer, and then go through the process of sorting everything afterwards, filtering out the seeds into the composters, that kind of thing. But I think we can give that a go, so I'm going to go ahead and get on with that. At long last, the storage for each side of the farm is complete, the waterways are in, and we can get this thing going. I've already collected a little bit as a test run, but let's just see what happens when I flick the lever. For a start, all of the dispensers are going to fire, which is going to send the flying machines off down to collect all of the flowers and grass and so forth. And thankfully, once they get out of range, they stop being quite so noisy, although the lag is still very much an issue. <laughs> These things are really tanking my frame rate. Hopefully that's something that gets fixed. I know that this version of Minecraft 1.14.1 still has a lot of issues with redstone and observers. And in some cases, I have a feeling that these observer clocks and stuff like that might not always work so well in whatever version you're playing. So just keep an eye on things and hopefully that will resolve stuff in the near future. But in the meantime, I'm going to switch this off just to preserve my frame rate ever so slightly and we can check out how things are coming into the storage system. Because what I've got is two composters set up to receive the seeds and the other hoppers and stuff just direct into a chest that's going to collect up all the flowers. As you can see, everything flies down into there and gets collected up pretty quickly thanks to the hoppers underneath it. And in fact, this end of the farm 
actually has a hop on minecart collecting some of that stuff and acting as kind of a storage buffer mainly to just take item entities out of the uh the the sort of real world <laughs> up here and and transfer them into the hopper which drains it into the hopper minecart these first two hoppers take things down to the item filter system here and it took me a little while to remember how to build these for some reason i just had a bit of a brain fart apparently but after that they go straight into the composters now the reason there are two item filters for seeds instead of just one is because it's not a perfect system this item hopper should only have one wheat seed in it and instead it's got 10. the reason for that is because the composter actually takes a couple of ticks to drain once it's full up. It takes a couple of seconds for the bone meal to form on the top and for that to get drained out into this chest, which has been collecting bone meal anytime seeds come through the system. But unfortunately, that means that the hopper backs up and then locks again thanks to the redstone torch that's underneath that. And that means that a couple of seeds end up in the system. So eventually, this hopper would completely fill up and I imagine there is another way that you could me measure that hopper out of a comparator and disable the redstone torch so that it only had one item left in it, but I am not smart enough to figure that out right now. What I am smart enough to do is filter the rest of the flowers into a chest where they can all appear in this lovely rainbow kind of order, and we've got nine different types of flowers, so that's perfect for the nine slots of this chest. And basically what I have on the opposite side of the farm is exactly the same system, a mirror image of that where we've got two composters and a whole bunch of of chest storage space for the flowers and this has clearly been going very well because I have almost a stack of some of these flowers a few of them are a little bit more rare the ones that spawn in smaller patches are going to be a little bit more difficult to get in large quantities but a lot of the time with red tulips and stuff like that those are the ones that are pretty common anyway or they just turn into red dye which is easily farmed so I think all in all, this flower farm has been a great success, and as long as I can stomach the frame drops when I'm stood here AFK at the thing, we should be able to harvest a whole bunch of flowers quite quickly and get a little bit of extra bone meal out of the bargain as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at flower farming. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.